Very good. Okay, so. So, uh, uh, in this talk, I'll uh, uh, explain or point out a bunch of things that you can use Atlas to work out your important representations. So, so the goal eventually is this is what uh, we want to do. Uh, what we want to do, but the results that we have are partial, but is to classify the important parameters. Yes. So the information that we have is a real reductive group. So G to R is a real. Okay, and so we want to classify your, uh, your important parameters for G of R. So if this set you call psi, then for each of these parameters psi, I want to compute what is no, known as the R curve, the important R curve packet. So, so this is step one. Step two is compute the yeah, sure. Here's the representations, important representations. Uh, Jonathan, yeah. Did you write one of the bigger ways? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So these are the two things we want to do, and uh, it turns out uh, uh, we got to use almost all the machinery that we have developed so far over the last week and up till today. So, uh, so uh, let's just get into the theory of it, what a unipotent R parameter is, and how do you define a unipotent R packet. And once you have those, I'll just illustrate the algorithms that go into computing uh, this set. So on the way, we'll do a bunch of uh, uh, examples on Atlas, and I'll do, work out uh, explicit calculations for SL2R and SP4C. Uh, yeah, so uh, you call, so, uh, so uh, you, an Arthur parameter is a homomorphism psi from or Okay. is a homomorphism psi from the real way group cross SL to C into the extended dual group. So this is a complex group. Yeah. So again, uh, in Atlas setup, we know that uh, your complex groups are uh, defined up to once you uh, know what the root data is. So you start with the root data for uh, GR, uh, GC, uh, uh, look at the, the dual root data for G, uh, G check C, and that's what your other parameter would be. And the real way group is generated by C cross and an element J where J square equals one, right? No. Minus one. Oh, oh minus. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we call the Arthur parameter unipotent. So, uh, 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 psi is unipotent if uh, psi restricted to the connected component of the identity, C cross of the way group, is trivial. Okay, so immediately from this, we can notice the following that, so given an Arthur parameter or 
another parameter so to define a unipotent after parameter of integrate uh, okay. so unipotent after parameter there are two things I need to do so the first part is to uh, so parameter psi of psi is to uh, specify what happens when psi is restricted to the si 2c part right and then the second part is to specify what happens at psi j because psi is restricted to c cross is trivial yeah so from here so this via jacobson moroso gives you a complex and important orbit so this is a map into i'm sorry this is the definition for uniform yes this one yeah so this is uh, size unipotent if this happens to this guy. Yeah, so let me just write this. So this is a map into, uh, so it's actually going to be a map into the dual group. Right? And so this is nothing but a Savaya so Jacobson by Jacobson Morosov. This is a complex, so this gives you a complex dual unipotent orbit. For so this is a orbit for GC and psi j. So this is an element. So psi j is an element. So of course it, it has to be an element of order two because it will have to respect uh, j squared goes minus one. So this is an uh, element of order two. Two in uh, G uh, check gamma. So okay, so so it's an element of order two in the centralizer of the map psi restricted to SL to C intersect with G check gamma minus G check. C. Okay, so it, it is. It has to lie in the uh, non-trivial component of uh, G set of a gamma. Yeah. And so from here, so this is one thing we'll use later, is that these two, so psi and psi j would specify. So once you know what psi is and what psi j is, so psi restricted to SR to C and your know, psi j specify so these guys give you a real form of your dual group and from here it, in fact it, it's just psi of j that, that defines the real form ah uh, no actually i think uh, it's no, i think a, it has the i minus i in it it's a, the real form is determined so the so the real form is going to be theta y I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Just we. Yeah. So. It's, oh. No. Okay. So the real form. I'm sorry. So the real form is going to be theta, uh, theta y, and y is going to be given by psi of i zero zero minus i times psi of j. Okay. So, and so once I have a real form of this. This gives me a real orbit of still sorry. Yeah. So uh, the sequence of ideas is the following. So uh, therefore, so you notice over here that Arthur packets, unimportant Arthur packets. are going to be in bidirection with uh, so you fix a uh, so as you vary over so it's going to be a union of uh, so O check is a 
complex dual orbit. And uh, the aliopotent alpha packets are going to be parameterized by the real orbits of this guy. So go check I R. <coughs> yeah. So uh, Adams kind of uh, gives a much nicer description of what each of these packets are going to be. So uh, a weak unipotent uh, unipotent alpha packet. So this is where you land into Atlas uh, uh, vocabulary. So, uh, so now we can fix a unipotent, I mean fix a, even, a dual even orbit. So fix O check C. Uh, so you fix an O check C. And to O check C, I can associate the weak Arthur packet. So this is the weak Arthur packet. This is associated to the complex orbit O check C. And this association is nothing but you're looking for all representations pi which satisfy the following properties that the infinitesimal character of pi has to be one half h and the complex associated variety of pi is O check C. Okay, so note that there is equality here. Wait, is oh. o, are those living, where's O-check living? Oh, so sorry, this is my check. So, so these are, so I'll get to this in a minute also. So these are duality maps. So there are two duality maps that I'm using over here. One is the duality of nilpotent orbits, and the other is the duality of representations, right? And the point that you want to remember is that both of these dualities respect each other, that if I compute the dual, dual of this guy, I'm going to get, uh, yes, I think uh, that makes sense, right? So the dualities are respected. So from the weak packet, I can get the... Did you say what one half H is? Oh yeah, that's right. So this guy here, once I fix this, this is going to give me my SI to triple, which is going to be X, Y, H. So this is my <coughs> SL to C corresponding to my complex dual important orbit, which means your H is going to be an element of, uh, so H is an element of H check, which is isomorphic to H star, right? So it is a valid infinitesimal character, so you, are, you can do this thing. So this is your weak Arthur packet, and honest Arthur packet is going to be corresponding to a real orbit of this guy, right? So it's going to correspond to a real orbit of O check, and this is now going to be, the definition is exactly the same, but with an added, I mean, one half edge, such that now the real associated variety of pi check, there is a containment relation here. Contains O check R. Right? So, so, um, so, so maybe you should say uh, your notation is slightly different from Peter. So, his or maybe C and A D R or what Peter was calling A B of I of pi and correct and A B of pi. Absolutely. So here, this is the AV of an annihilator of I of pi, and this is AV of pi. Also, did you mention that H is, uh, that the orbit is even? Everything so this is, makes sense for everything. It's all okay? All right. All right. right? It's yeah, only it's, in the computation that right. we have to make the assumption that the orbit is even. Yeah, so this is what we have. Duality, isn't there trouble with the duality? There is a theoretical trouble. There's apparently Atlas trouble, but All right. um, oh, it, oh, it, that's human error. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, important thing to note is that 
uh, weak outer packets are destroyed. Always disjoint. Okay, but the containment relation here makes are the packets need not. Okay, so this is kind of one of the tricky parts about computing unipotent other packets as opposed to weak other packets because uh, uh, when the real associated variety is reducible, there are problems that Okay, so this is so this is what we are now trying to find. Okay, so so to restate our goal, so uh, goal restated. is make sense of these two sets in Atlas. So uh, identify uh, phi weak of O check C and phi R in Atlas. And that's basically the chunk of the rest of the talk. So I'll uh, explain how this identification works, and we'll move ahead and see how to actually work it out in a bunch of examples. So this is a, a short digression. So what what we want to do is there is the following thing. So you want to understand the representation theory of G at a given infinite decimal character. That's all it goes. Right. So, or even for uh, so, like if you want to understand the representation theory of G, you know that this is a disjoint union of bunch of these guys as rho varies over h star. <laughs> no? uh, I mean, it's true by W. Is that what's bothering you? Well, no, no, no. It's it's just oh. the, the choice of rho is oh. not damn. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so and the crucial uh, uh, point you want to do is that each of these sets are finite. So this problem comes down to understanding each of these guys, which I gamma, and you decompose this as a disjoint union of blocks, right? So if this was my G, you would go over the real forms. G check I of G check C, right? Can, can you even read what you wrote there? <laughs> <laughs> Partly I'm trying to talk also, but maybe real forms G check R I of G check C. So these are going to be block pairs of G check R. Oh, sorry, G R, G check R, I. Yeah. And then you further decompose each of these blocks. So you decompose. So now if I fix, so now from here to here I have fixed a fix a gamma. And for what you've written, it's an integral gamma. Ah, uh, that's okay. Sorry. So gamma integral. <clears throat> the the R is a little too big in integral. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's like lessons in English. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so from here to here, now now if I fix a, a real form, so from there, now if I fix a fix an I, 
which is the real form of your dual group, I will end up with a block G, GI. So I will suppress the, all right? So now both of these are real groups. And this block is now going to be a disjoint union of <coughs> cells. So cells C, R, H, C cells. Uh, so this is from uh, our stock. Right? So cells. And so every computation that we make for associated varieties would come down to making the computation on each of these cells. So this is going to give you a bunch of cells here. C1, C2, C3, all the way up to Ck. And a result of Trappa's talk was that computing the associated variety of the cell, so if you want to compute the associated complex associated variety, that is ABC, of C1, this is the same as computing the complex associated variety of a representation pi that lands inside the C cell and it's going to be fixed over the cell. Yeah? So this is this is the implementation that we have for complex associated variety. So uh, the first step is computing these guys. So, what we know, so it is implemented, so if G is of classical type, one can compute ABC of a cell C is computable. And add it. Okay, so that's probably the first place to look at an example. So, so for example, can you use the board? I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, so let's say. G is equal to SL to R. And I want to compute the complex associated variety of a cell. So I mean I I need a block input, right? So I said G D to be the dual quasi split form of G. I said the block B is the block of G, G, B. So now, so all these commands are kind of local only on my computer, so if you're trying to implement them, I mean, if you're trying to mirror these, you might not get them because it's not yet up. I mean, maybe because the code is not completely optimal, so it just does the work. It's not beautiful, the commands don't have beautiful names. So, A, B, for a given block, so if I put in the block that I get, <coughs> the output is going to be the important orbits that correspond to the given cell. So if I do print W cells of B, I have <coughs> cell number 1 contains representation 0, cell 1 contains representation 1, and cell 2 Right? Uh, contains representation 2 and uh, I wish that was a point right there. Yeah. <coughs> so if you check over there, right, and if you look at the output of AB for a given block, it tells you that the 0th element, which means the 0th cell is going to have complex associated variety 2, the first cell is going to have complex associated variety 1, and the second cell, which contains the trivial representation, is going to have complex associated variety 1, 1. So this is, in fact, true. I mean, so we can work this for any group. So if I said G is equal to <coughs> SP4R, for example, and uh, 
right? Set GD be the dual <coughs> quasi split form of G and set B equals log of G GD. I can now compute AB for the given block of G. Oh, B, sorry. And that's the output. So it's an array of uh, num uh, integer arrays. So these are cell, I mean, so each entry over here corresponds to the corresponding cell. So 0th cell has associated variety 4, the first cell has associated variety 4, and so forth. So, uh, Say that those, those orbits are in partition notation. Oh, yes. So, uh, this is from Collingwood and McLaughlin that O check. Uh, so, there is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if you have O check C uh, is going to be in bijection with certain partitions. Of a certain integer. Okay, so this is nothing but uh, so these are so either n, 2n plus 1, 2n, or 2n again. So type A, type B, type C, type B. Huh? So, uh, so these are my partitions. So again, like this seems to be uh, easy, right? So now I know the AB for the entire cell. If I want the AB for a parameter, all I need to do is I need to figure out which block it lies in, which cell it lies in, compute, its, compute the AB for the cell, and I have the AB for the parameter. So, I mean, thanks to the programmability of Atlas, I can write a script for this. So I can write a command for, so if I set T, to be the trivial of G, right? I can do AB param of T. So the output here is telling me that this parameter lies in block number two and it has complex associated variety 111. Huh? So let's do the following. So set uh, A to be all parameters gamma of g comma rho g of bracket and now for a in a do print as uh, a v param of a rho g so here you have that same command and put P comma. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. So if I have A or A comma, yeah. Comma. Nice. So these are all the parameters I draw for the group SP or R. And now it's telling you that. So the first part of the, uh, so it's a pair integer and a integer array. So the first integer is telling you which block that parameter belongs to, and the second one tells you the complex associated variety of the block. So for example, if you set A to be the block of the trivial representation of G, and now you run the same command, you notice that the first term has to be the first integer is always two because the trivial block is actually the block uh, number two, right? And so these are the associated varieties for each of these. So this is the trivial representation, and those are the two uh, large discrete series for sp i Okay, so you could do this for any group. So I can set uh, g is equal to s o. I mean any group of time a b c. So for example, if I set G to be U22 and I set A, oh sorry, let's do this A, the block of the trivial representation of U, and I 
do the same yoga again. You notice that now these are partitions of four and these are the complex associated varieties for all of those representations in that block. Uh, a uh, more interesting thing would be maybe if I said GD be the dual quasi split form of G, set B to be the block of G, GD, and now if I compute the AV for a given block B, so these are all the corresponding uh, 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 orbits that can show up. So one of the uh, results that you, I mean, one of the things that uh, Peter uh, spoke about was that, I mean, all complex associated varieties that show up as, I mean, all orbits that show up as complex associated varieties of a representation will end up being special, right? And so in some sense, these would be all the special orbits in type A, which are all the orbits. Yeah? So, for example, I mean, and the same thing if we go back and see for type uh, C here, yeah, so type C, this is the guy, for type SP4, so these are your special orbits, 4, 2, 2, and 1, 1, 1, okay? So, so which means computing, so computing this set here, Therefore, so this requires a final ingredient. It's the following. So the reason why I started over here is because so the entire calculation for weak unipotent packets happens on the dual side, right? And then the final step to come back to the group side. So this is the dual side. So, so before you go on, I think you should mention that uh, you're using the Noel Jackson algorithm in here somewhere. Oh yes. Yeah, I was planning to say something about it when I actually come to this one, but yeah, that's true. So this is the dual the dual sign. And here is the group sign. So the only thing that we end up doing on the group side is once we have identified our complex associated varieties, we kind of use open duality. To, so there is a bijection. So now there are various bijections over here. So under open duality, uh, a cell C on the dual side. So let me put since we are on the dual side here, put checks here. So a dual cell C is going to correspond. Uh, so this always happens in the top right. Let's let's do that. So a dual cell C is going to correspond to a group cell on the group side. And the associated varieties are also going to respect that, but we don't care about the associated varieties on the group side. So all that we want is, so from this cell here, I'm going to compute my dual cell, C check, I mean eventually this is my group.